Hey there, today I'm going to be sharing with you the setup that I use to photograph receptions with flashes and I'm going to break down my setup using two off-camera flashes and an umbrella. If you are new to weddings, if you are new to photography, if you're new to flash, you may want to watch the more basic one flash setup, one off-camera flash setup that I have linked below that I did a while back. That would be an easier way to start that's a little less overwhelming. That is a system that I used in the past when I first got started, but the current system that I use is what I've been using for many, many years, and that's what I'm gonna teach you today. So my basic setup for using two off-camera flashes that I have one off-camera flash where I have a shoot-through umbrella that's exposing the front of my subject, and then I have an off-camera flash that is normally in the background, somewhere in the back of the room that is bare without an umbrella um, that I use to create glow and background light. And then I also have an on-camera flash that I use to trigger the other flashes and I keep it on my camera not necessarily to use the exposure the light power from the actual flash when I'm shooting with the umbrella but I use it in case I have an emergency situation like mom or the bride runs up with all of her high school friends right next to me I need to turn around and have some flash power without moving them or the light stand I need to have that on-camera flash ready for emergency situations so the whole purpose of having these two off-camera flashes is to mimic the light that I love shooting with in natural light that really has determined a lot of my style and so I'm mimicking my natural light set up with the sun by creating a large soft light exposing the front that's why I use the umbrella and then a more direct backlit glow is coming from that off-camera flash that does not have an umbrella that's behind my subject when I'm shooting the goal is if I can create that similar glow with artificial light in the nighttime during these reception moments then across the board my work just looks more consistent and looks more like me so one advantage of shooting this way with two off-camera flashes is the fact that when when you use an on-camera flash and you are using your on-camera flash as the main source of light to expose your couple when you walk closer to them your light so it's going to be brighter it's going to be uh, more intense unless you turn your flash power down if you back up far away your client's going to get a little darker because you're moving your your the power of your light source away from your subject and so if you're using an umbrella as your main source of light to expose the front of your subject you can move around the one l side of the dance floor during a dance and be able to have that light from that umbrella still casting the same intensity of light onto your subjects and it's not going to change because you don't have the main light source attached to you so you can get closer and farther back and that continuous um, intensity of light is going to hit your subject repeatedly so a few potential downsides of this setup would just be one I mean it does cost more you have to spend a little bit more money to have another flash and another stand and more batteries and um, so that's one thing it's a pretty obvious one but another one would be uh, there's more chances of things going wrong you know linking two flashes is double the amount of technicalities you have to worry about than if you just had one um, another downfall could be you know that if you don't have a second shooter it is a lot to move around that is honestly the most stressful part about this setup is that you've got to have the accessibility and the time and the space to be able to move this thing around um, in order to capture certain events but most of the time these events are not happening bam 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 I mean it, sometimes they do and Michael helps me a lot and he knows when he hears an announcement that an event is happening he goes straight to the umbrella and he's looking at me like where do you want this set and I'm getting lined up and I'm saying a little bit this way and he's doing that so if I didn't have a second shooter this would be a little tricky so that's those are just some downsides to think about but I don't think any of those um, are important enough or intense enough to overshadow all of the pluses all the pros all the reasons you should do this so you're going to look so much more professional it's worth the downsides all right so let's talk a little bit about placement so when I enter into a reception area and I'm getting ready to set up my flash normally I'm setting it up for either entrances or the first dance um, let's talk about like if it was the first dance because that's a little bit easier so I'm looking at the setup and I'm deciding what I want in the background and this is different um normally I would say with natural light shooting with the sun like you don't get to just choose your location and then do the light right because you can't change the sun so but I'm moving the sun in this scenario so with an off-camera flash I'm moving the sun wherever I want and so I am looking around the room I'm like I don't want the DJ in the background 
Uh, I don't want like the catering and like the exit sign in the background. So maybe I'll set up so like this table, like mom and dad, like bridal party mom and dad are here. So I'm gonna have them in the background. But in general, I try to pick the background that I love. And then I use my umbrella on a stand with my flash shooting through the umbrella um, at a 45 degree angle, either to the left or the right. So you don't want it to be right beside me because if I was shooting with my flash stand and my umbrella right here, the light's gonna hit them flat. It's not gonna have any dimension. And then it's like, why not just use a bounce card? Like it's gonna look more unprofessional, less dimension, less highlight and shadow. So something else to consider is raising up your umbrella high enough and maybe angling your flash down just a little bit so that if there are some shadows, there shouldn't be harsh ones, but if there are some, those shadows are gonna hit the floor. Also, it's always more flattering. I mean, even this setup right now, I have a flat, I have light source right above my head. It's just a little bit more flattering for that light source to come from a slightly higher angle. And then the second flash, you're going to set up in the back of the room. And this is important to think through anything on the back side of that flash, anything by beyond or behind that secondary flash is going to be dark. So in my opinion, I, I like having depth and I like having the glow. And if it's a really pretty tent or a ballroom with chandeliers, I don't think there's any reason why I want to cut off the length of the ballroom. So I'm gonna try to put that flash pretty decently far far back. So there's two technical reasons why I am using this flash. One, I want to create depth and dimension. If I don't have this, then the light that's exposing for the, the front of my subject, it's going to look beautiful on their skin on the front, but it's going to be like they're dancing in a black room behind them. So you're, you're going to, it's going to be very dramatic and maybe you like that, but I like adding the secondary flash because it's going to make everything behind the couple glow. We have a little bit of control over how bright the background is going to be. But then also the goal is for that secondary off camera flash to hit the back of your client's head just slightly so it kind of gives that rim lighting around their hair similar again to if I took them out during sunset portraits and the glow of the sun was hitting the back of their head. Ultimately the placement of your off-camera flash uh, it also depends on the intensity because if that off-camera flash is really high powered then it's really important that you don't get a glimpse of that that flash in your frame because it'll cause some pretty intense haze but if you have it lower powered and you're increasing the glow of the room by higher iso or a wider aperture then you don't have to worry necessarily if you have a little burst of sun in the background and that flash is in the frame because it's not going to be overpowering. So let's talk about in general like some settings like how do I get to a place where I understand what my settings are going to be and this changes depending on the room. The room dictates how I set up my flashes and what the settings and how intense the power levels are going to be. Uh, but there are some general rules of thumb that we could use to get started. Okay, so the first thing I do when it comes to settings is I'm getting my camera settings in a general ballpark of what I know I normally would use. So I like to shoot with higher ISO. There's a lot of reasons for that. If I have lower ISO, it's a lot harder to get that glowy look. I like the ambient light that comes from having higher ISO. So starting my ISO at 1600 is pretty standard. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make that adjustment normally. I'm, I'm almost always shooting at 2.0, um, especially with the 28 to 70, that's as low as I can go. But for dances, I don't normally shoot, even though I was if I was shooting with um, a prime lens, it could go down to 1.2. I'm never choosing that for a dance. 2.0 is a safe spot. And then my shutter is normally a, a range between one over 125 or one over 200th of a second. I, I would say that that changes depending on the room, just like the flash power also changes depending on the room. So the next step would be figuring out your flash power. I would recommend starting with one flash at a time. I get Michael to stand on the dance floor. I'm working with my flash with the umbrella and I'm figuring out what that needs to be to be properly exposed. Normally I start at like 1 64th power. That's just a general safe zone for me. Honestly, I feel like it stays there a lot of the time. And so I see what it's looking like. If it's just too much, it's overpowering. Um, then I, my first go-to is to lower that flash power, not to lower my ISO. On the flip side, if I'm trying to get Michael on the dance floor, this test shot to look like he is bright enough and 1 16th, I'm at 1 16th power and, and it's still not quite bright enough, that's kind of a red flag for me that I need to increase my ISO. I need to do something else because I'm, I don't hardly ever use a flash power that is that powerful because ultimately, I don't like how intense that light source looks. I don't like it at that power. So that's like a red flag for me to maybe adjust some other areas um, and to get some of the glow and some of that ambient light showing up another way. Then after I make sure the umbrella is set, we're good to go. Then I'm gonna go make sure my off-camera flash in the back of the room um, is, is doing 
what it's supposed to be doing. That it is bright enough to fill that space, but also not overpowering to where it washes out the back of the room and looks like a sunburst everywhere. I don't want that. Again, I will start at 164th power, see what that looks like. There are scenarios and rooms, especially dark ballrooms that don't have white ceilings, where that off-camera flash all the way in the back of the room, it's gonna be at pretty, it's gonna be at maybe 116th power, whereas the umbrella will be at 164th. If I'm in a white tent, however, that off camera flash in the back. If it's a small white tent, it's gonna barely be doing anything because that light's gonna hit the ceiling where it's low. It's gonna kind of reverberate over the room and I'm not gonna need quite as much from it. So these are scenarios that I find myself in constantly, but I can't say that there's like a set thing that I'm always, like these are my settings no matter what because every room is different. Every reception is different. The size of the room is different. The layout of the room is different. I've even used different settings in the same ballroom just simply because the dance floor was moved to a different part of it. So there's not any set guaranteed setting that I go to. There's just patterns that I've noticed. All right, so this setup is gonna work for different events throughout the evening. The specialty dances, bride and groom, father, daughter, all those. Um, it'll work for toast, the same way you would approach toast. You would take the same idea, set, about, set it up the same way, where you have your umbrella flash exposing the front, your flash in the back of the room, doing some light on the back of their heads and providing depth um, by, by exposing what's behind your subject. Same thing even for cake cutting. Uh, and if cake cutting is in like a tight corner, then you change your approach slightly. But in general, this is how I use this setup for the majority of the events. Now, the only time that we change things up is when party dancing begins. And it is very, it's a clear distinction, like when the transition happens, because the DJ is like, all right, I mean, his voice changes, the music gets louder, the lights drop, the lasers come on, and you're like, all right, we've made it to the party dancing. And that is when I take the umbrella off, there's no need for it, unless cake cutting is happening later, and we'll put it back on and, and you know reevaluate that. But for the most part, you take the umbrella off, and my new approach, because I need, this is my problem. If I was to shoot party dancing with an umbrella, with that off camera flash the way it was, then if the bride and groom are in the middle of the dance floor dancing with some bridal party members, but there's like a really tall aunt and uncle here, and there's a college friend dancing here, and their hands are in the air, and they get in between that flash and your subject, and you're trying to shoot over here, you're gonna have aunt so-and-so's shadow of her hand on your bride's face. That's not gonna work for me. Some people it works well, but you gotta shoot a lot to be able to capture things that don't have shadows getting in the way. So what I, love to do is get rid of the umbrella. I take that off camera flash that is now umbrella less and I move it to another corner of the background. So whatever the opposite corner is from the flash that's already there, or we just take it down altogether if it's a very small wedding. Um, but basically now I'm adding more glow to the background. So I might lower those flashes, the power down a little bit because now I have two in the background. And now I'm going to use my on camera flash. It's been waiting for its debut. It's waiting to be used. And I'm going to use the bounce card very low power, higher ISO, because if you do too f high of a flash power with your bounce card, it looks like a disposable camera. It's just not good light. So I use low power with a little bit of that bounce card. I'm pushing a little bit of light, exposing the front of the subject, and I can get pretty close to them. And I do shoot pretty close to them. It's very rare that I'm walking around the dance floor shooting at 70 millimeters, right? Because that's a little bit harder. It's a harder way to frame someone dancing and moving all around. So I'm, I'm a little bit closer, which works well for the bounce card. Um, and then the flashes that are in the back of the room are brightening up the background, exposing the background, which allows me to still, again, have that consistent KJ glow. I'm just changing the way that I'm exposing the front. Instead of using an off-camera flash with an umbrella, I'm using an on-camera flash with a low-powered bounce card. So if you ever get overwhelmed by flash, I hope this has simplified it for you, has given you a new level of empowerment that you can do this. You can figure out a new setup that you love. If you want to see a video in the future, you need to like and subscribe so you don't miss anything that comes out of this channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.